Then when I got to age sort of 16, 17, I started to think about the bigger questions. Is there a God? Uh, is, the Torah, how can, is the Torah divinely authored? Um, is this something that really should matter to me in my life? Uh, you know, it's quite a big commitment actually. Even just wanting to marry someone Jewish, you're literally cutting off like 99% of the world's population. Um, and other things as well. There's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of laws that it, that it sort of dictates and it's sort of like, I need to understand whether this is really something that's important to me. I don't think, I guess culture's nice if it's cultural and you're sort of ca carrying on tradition. I think that is important to an extent. But is it enough to sort of dictate your whole life and dictate the decisions you make in life? So, I started reading more, sort of learning more, coming across books that dealt with Jewish philosophy. I became convinced once, sort of age 17 years old, that there is a God, that there's sufficient evidence to say that the Torah is written by the author that it claims to have, God, um, that uh, made sense of issues like, can there be suffering in the world if there's a God, God and science, um, you know, other sort of big issues like that. If, if God has no needs whatsoever, why would he create the world? Why would he make demands on human beings? What does he get? Why, he, has, he doesn't need anything. Why, would he, why do we call God a he? You know, all these kind of questions. Um, and I started to look into it more and I became more and more compelled by the Jewish uh, story, the Jewish message. Not just also the, the philosophical questions, but also the incredible story that is Jewish history. The fact that Jews have spent most of our history throughout the last 2,000 years um, scattered throughout the world, few in number, um, despite the fact that our laws say we have to have as many children as possible, um, and, also, and also despite the fact that we were the same in population as the Chinese 2,000 years ago, and yet today the Chinese number about 1.3 billion, whereas the Jew, oh, it's, about, it's actually that give or take 13 million. 13 million is the population of the Jewish people worldwide. So the Jews are a statistical error when trying to count how many Chinese people there are in the world. That's how small we are. Um, in fact, there were, uh, there t t uh, one third of, of world Jewry was wiped out during the Holocaust, so we haven't even met that target. There are less Jews today than there were before the Holocaust. It's crazy to think. Now we can explain, by the way, the fact that we've had, that we've had been few in number so much because of the fact that we've had so much consistent persecution. But it is a remarkable thing that we've been few in number and despite being scattered throughout the world, unlike every, I can't think of any other nation that, hasn't been, that, that, that has been scattered throughout the world rather than being, having the same common land, language and culture. We haven't had those three things. We've been all over the place. Um, and yet we've not, and the other thing is we've also had persistent and consistent uh, persecution throughout our history. I can't think of any other people who have experienced a more intense form of hatred throughout their history. I think anti-Semitism is unique for four key reasons. Number one, it's universal. Wherever Jews seem to go or not go, it happens. Where uh, the fact that it's so intense, there's a whole library of words used to describe incidents and how, how anti-Semitism manifests, pogrom, boycott, ghetto, holocaust, you know, etc., etc. It's irrationality, the fact that unlike other hatreds and persecutions, Jews have been hated for being capitalists, for being communists, because they are parasites on our state, because they created their own nation state. Jews get out of Palestine, Jews get back to Palestine, Jews created Jesus, Jews uh, killed Jesus. You know, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's almost, I think it's almost a divine. Well, no, it is. I think it is divine. I think it's supernatural. I don't think you can explain it other way, any other way. And also it's longevity. The fact that for as long as Jews, literally, when the Jewish people, the first time the Jewish people are called a nation in the Torah, the very next sentence, they're called an arm, the very next sentence, um, Pharaoh says we've got to wipe them out. It's almost as if there's something inherent in the Jewish people's existence that they need, that there's always going to be a force against them trying to destroy them because they have such a sacred mission is the reason I think that's what anti-Semitism ultimately comes down to. But the fact that you have those three things scattered all over the world, few in number, intensely persecuted, and yet we're still here. It's unbelievable. It's a remarkable thing, the fact that the Jewish people are still around. Even if we didn't have the being scattered, the persecution, the few in number, all that kind of stuff. I mean, the Jebusites aren't around anymore. The Canaanites aren't around anymore. And yet the Jewish people who are around at the same time are still here. And it's not just like you know, the, the ancient Greek empire is gone, but you still have Greeks here. They, there's nothing of ancient Greece that sort of remains in terms of their, their culture, their laws, all that kind of stuff. Whereas when it comes to the Jewish people, Judaism, the, thing, the culture, the laws, the Torah that we're practicing today, you would recognize 2,000 years ago. So that, I think, is remarkable, incredible. And then on top of that is the fact that the Jewish people have um, inspired so much of the world. The fact that the majority of the world believes in the God of Abraham today. That is 
unbelievable. The fact that the Jewish people, this tiny people, who, the fact that Abraham, forget the Jewish people for a second, the first Jew, Abraham, who had no military might, no political power, didn't have outstanding wealth, he was a wealthy guy, but isn't, you know, couldn't like command all the world with his wealth, um, the whole world laughed at him. He was called the Hebrew. Hebrew means separate, because it was as if he was on, he believed in this concept of one God that you can have a relationship with, and the whole rest of the world laughed at him, believed in idols, or didn't believe you could relate to God, whatever. And he said, no, there is one God. You can relate to him. He wants a relationship with everyone. everyone. Every human being is accountable. And he was laughed at, and yet the Torah was convinced 3,000 years ago that all the families of the earth would bless themselves through Abraham. That's the language of Genesis. And today, the majority of the world believes in this God of Abraham through the monotheistic offshoots of Christianity and Islam. And they would all recognize, you say to a Muslim or to a Christian, do you believe in the God of Abraham? Yes, absolutely. That's a remarkable thing. And there's also so many values that come from that. Western civilization is based on these Judeo-Christian values. The founding of America, which has been an incredible bastion of democracy and liberty, which saved Europe from tyranny of Nazi Germany. Was found, the founders of America were obsessed with the Hebrew Bible and with the, the, the concept of our rights and our liberties coming from God, not coming from man, because if they come from man, man can take them away. I actually did my dissertation at uni, on, at UCL, on how the, the, the Old Testament inspired the founders of America. But there's so much more to say about that. So many of the values that we take for granted, peace as an ideal, family values, education as a human right, uh, human, human uh, life as, an, as, as, as sacred, um, uh, uh, social responsibility for the poor and the needy, these were first, they were not articulated by ancient Greece and ancient Rome, which, we, which are part of what Western civilization is based on. They were first articulated by the Bible, by the Hebrew Bible. So it's not just the fact that the Jewish people have survived, despite all the challenges they felt, but also the fact that they've been, they've, they've had this remarkable, we have had this remarkable impact on human history, on, on the world's value system. Um, that's what really, sort of going back to my own story, that's what really sort of made me like, wow, this is an incredible people to be associated with during my teen years, started to become more aware of, like, wow, this is, this is extremely compelling, this is an amazing people to be a part of, this is a miraculous people to be a part of. But the real clincher for me was the fact that it's not just that all these things have happened, but also the fact that it's all clearly, these things are all clearly foretold in the Hebrew Bible. It says you're going to be scattered all over the world. I will scatter you among the nations. You'll be few in number where I lead you there. You will be, in, it says that you will be intensely persecuted. You know, your, your, your paranoia will fill your every day. Um, but it also is the Torah is convinced that the Jewish people will not only survive, that the descendants of Jacob will not cease to exist, as it says in Malachi, but also that the Jewish people will be a light unto the nations. Um, and all these things have happened. So it's just, they're so unpredictable, they're so unprecedented, but the fact that it's all these things have happened and were written thousands of years ago, to me I think it's the most plausible argument is that this is written by a being not bound by time, aka a god. So that for me was a big mind shift which sort of shaped my, my sort of foundations in c commitment to, uh, to Jewish practice and to, to Judaism. Um, and then I went on, but it wasn't enough to really make me transform my whole life, I sort of I, what, really what really should have got me going was a trip to Poland uh, when I was in my last year of school. Um, and I have a very strong memory of sort of going into this tunnel uh, which had so uh, papers on either side of the tunnel and it had lists of names of Jews uh, that, the, that the Nazis had that they sent, where, where it was the names of the people they were sending off on the train tracks to, to the camps. And it had red lines written sort of uh, mark through them once they had sent them off and I just remember walking through that and then at the end of the tunnel all, I was at the back of the, t uh, back of the line and all the sort of Jews my age sort of got in a circle and started singing and it was just that, mo that moment was like it was like a specific moment uh, where I just kind of s saw like the majesty of Jewish survival, seeing all these names crossed off and yet a living, breathing Jewish people. Um, and I really, it was, it was probably one of the most sort of spiritual moments I've ever had. Um, and I just really felt at that moment like I have to take this seriously now. Um, I have to take my sort of responsibility to, this, to my people, to the Jewish people seriously. And so I decided after, literally at that moment, I'm going to yeshiva. I'm going to study in, uh, in, in Israel. Didn't really know what yeshiva was. I didn't never really opened the page of Gemara Talmud before, but I was like, I've got to do this, I've got to become more connected to my Jewish identity, I've got to understand what the Torah asks of me as a Jew. Um, and also, like, I became more interested in the fact that Jews believe history is a process, a process of where the Jewish people 
uh, inspire the world to, to bring them back to a relationship with God, back to the Garden of Eden, which was the beginning, beginning of history, uh, which is the Messianic era. And the remarkable fact that we're not actually at the end of that story, and we as Jews still have a role to play in, in ending that story and, and, and bring it to its culmination. So that was an incredibly like, inspiring, exciting thing to, to, to realize that I can be a part of. To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.